Get ready for an epic episode that bridges time and space. Do you remember the first episode of this tutorial? We go way back, but time travel comes at a cost. The first time I started recording this episode was two months ago. And yet finally, after all this time, results. This, this actually feels really good. This actually feels really good. I'm not gonna lie. Hi everybody, this is Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. This is the advanced schmuck tutorial. Oh, this is gonna be an exciting episode where a lot of things will happen. The game will change dramatically. So, uh, we arrived at the point where we really, 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 really need to nail down some gameplay questions. And for this purpose, I want to create a bunch of prototypes. I want to just iterate a little bit on different ideas that I have in my head. I want to try them out. I want to see how they'll play out. I want to also get in some feedback. I want to send them these things. Maybe Actain uh, said that uh, he would look at this stuff, maybe and give me some feedback and you know, advise me a little bit which direction I want to push this project into. I will not share the code of the prototype with you. I'm not going to upload the code of the prototype. Um, this episode is only just to document the process I go through to figure out, you know, the final gameplay questions. What are the gameplay questions that we try to find out? Well, so I created like a folder where I will do my experiments in here. Here are some of the prototype questions. Broadly speaking, something I really want to nail down is the movement. Uh, I and I know we already worked on movement way back in one of the first episodes. We kind of like established kind of like a movement system and that's fine. Like it's, it's working fine. It feels good. But with a lot of shmups, there's like a lot of abilities that are tied into how the movement works exactly. So for example, there's this thing where like there's this idea of the focus fire. If you keep firing the weapon, then you get like a very strong beam, but you will move slower. So this kind of like movement details um, is something I want to figure out exactly how the movement will play out in details. We can move around, obviously, but how exactly does it work? Uh, then um, I want to have uh, firing or a shot. I want to figure out the shot. I want to nail down what the shot is that we have. We have a good shot right now. I kind of like it. But we already noticed that we, it's kind of straight. It would be nice if maybe there was some abilities to attack some things that, that are not where you are, right? Like give us some, like lots of shmups have abilities to spread out the shot a little bit. And I think it's worth thinking about this a little bit. Then a special ability. I call it special ability. Uh, but uh, you know, we have a button that is not used. <laughs> and it would be nice if that button would be do doing something cool. Um, usually, this is a bomb, um, but this could be also hyper. Uh, like, thinking coming up with some kind of thing that the other button does that is cool and fun and exciting and, and maybe also challenges the player in kind of like some way or gives them some, some cool thing to, to, to experiment with. Like, just add a bit of a spice. And then finally, uh, I also want to figure out the scoring, which ideally all of these things would kind of like merge together, right? I cannot like just, just focus on the move details where these other things are not figured out. They're kind of like all interlinked, right? That is why I have to kind of like go into my own doggy zone, right, for this. I need to <laughs> sit down and do prototypes and try out things. They are going to be incredibly janky. But at the end of the day, hopefully, we're going to figure this out. And it's not going to be just one day. It's going to take some time. Uh, here are some, some things I want to try. Here, because I'm not going into this like with, with an empty head. I had, I had some ideas already. Uh, things I want to try. All right. So um, I want to try the classic cave. Uh, classic cave um, means that... Okay, maybe just to clarify. So in, a lot of cave shooters have two buttons or maybe three buttons, like usually it's two buttons, uh, where it's like one button is for like a bomb and one button is for shooting. And the shooting button works um, like if you keep the button pressed, as I said, if you keep the button pressed, you get like a focused fire and the ship is moving slower. And, and if you're tapping the button, then you will get like a rapid fire that is, that is spread out and your ship is moving faster. So, for me, this is classic cave, and I think Kalikan used basically uh, classic cave uh, setup. 
which is one of the shmups inspired by this video series. So it worked well with Kalikan, so I want to maybe try it out if how that works out in, in my game. Another thing I want to try is options. I have no options right now, like options meaning like these little, little tiny little ships or like drones that are circling your ship. Uh, I want to try the options because they give me um, uh, they give me spread. They mean give me opportunities to introduce spread. Um, so uh, yeah, options with spread would be nice. In a lot of like cave-like shmups, like um, uh, Dodonpachi or the um, what's it called, Chrism Clover, you have the the options. And when you go into focus fire mode, like in a classic cave mode, when you go into focus fire, they kind of like whoop, they kind of go in front of you, and you can see that the, sh the the actual options are doing the shots. Then I have a spicy. Christian's pseudo, pseudo, pseudo cave. I have a spicy idea for a Christian's pseudo, pseudo cave. Um, broadly speaking, something I've been incepted by my <laughs> my uh, Discord community is like this discussion of uh, why do we have a fire button if you can just keep the button pressed, right? And I kind of like, yeah, why? So um, there is actually a cave game that I really like, which is uh, Aspirate. And that is also kind of like classic cave, but it's a little bit different in that uh, I feel like the way I play Aspirate, and I'm not playing Aspirate well, maybe I'm playing it wrong, but the way I play Aspirate is I keep the button pressed because like that fire is okay, like it's, it's, it feels okay that that fire pattern is spready enough. And then occasionally when I want to move out of the way, I want to move quicker, then I let go of the fire button. Occasionally letting go of the fire button to move faster. If I want to go faster, I let go of the fire button. And I thought that was better than having to tap the fire button constantly. Like if you have situations where you really have to tap the fire button a lot, I feel like this is really stressing me out and this is really not good on the, on the hands. Like it, I think it works really well with the arcade cabinet. But I think in modern times, like, I think modern sensibilities are no longer these kind of like, oh, firing a button is, mashing a button is fun for longer periods of time. So I want to maybe uh, introduce like um, a gameplay rhythm where you keep the button pressed all the time, m most of the time, and then occasionally you want to dodge and then let go of the button very quickly to, to do like a fast maneuver. Now I'm going to try a classic bump uh, as an ability. This, this is the part that um, deals more with the abilities. And then something I want to try out, and I don't know, I want to do the the, the Itano Circus, um, or or like Bangai O. So again, this uh, pertains to like the special ability. Like, sure, let's make just make a classic bump. But also, um, I'm because we are have a jet. And and th that's kind of like a, I don't know. Just dropping a bomb doesn't doesn't seem that exciting to me. I mean, maybe it's exciting. Maybe it will look amazing. We do have a really good explosion system. But something that I really appreciate, I really like, are like kind of like the aesthetics of the macros, like the old anime series where um, you know where the, you have like jet planes that can transform into robots. And um, the creator of that series. Um, What's his name again? Ichiro Itano, that's right. So he's like a very famous animator who coined this idea, this term of the Itano Circus. And if you've seen Macross, you know exactly what Itano Circus is. In fact, even if you haven't seen Macross, you probably have seen Itano Circus. It's kind of like a very distinct aesthetic that has become like a fundamental base language of anime. And that is this idea that you know you, you show this graphic of a plane or some kind of like flying thing shooting out lots of missiles with contrails, like you see the smoke behind the missiles. And those missiles are guided missiles and they're kind of like circle around each other and around the camera and go towards the target. And, and it's like the, this huge amount of circles with contrails and the camera is weaving between those, those, um, those missiles and then eventually they hone in on the target and they like, you know, go around the camera and everywhere. It's, it looks fantastic. It's an incredible visual. It's completely nonsensical, but it looks amazing. Obviously, you cannot pull off an Itano circus in a, in a shmup game. Like the, you cannot move the camera around. But uh, the idea of like a lot of missiles with contrails is really fun. And 
I thought maybe this could be the special ability in this game. Where like instead of a bomb where it's just like the whole screen just explodes, you press a button and, and uh, your ship shoots out lots of missiles and they hit all sorts of enemies and explode everywhere. I've seen this kind of effect in the game Bungai O. On a Dreamcast, there's a game where you have like a little tiny little mech and you it's not really a shmup because you go in different directions, but you fly around and then you can mash a button and then uh, huge amount of rockets fire out from your from your ship um, and that has a cool game mechanic as well where um, the circus is stronger this ability is stronger when uh, there's more bullets on the screen enemy bullets on the screen and if they're closer to you so you kind of want to wait until the bullets almost hit you and then you mash the ability and then you know it, it explodes and, and fires back and I think this is a really nice risk reward mechanic and feels incredibly satisfying <laughs> so that's why i want to maybe re re recreate this i don't know if we have the tokens for this i don't know if we can make this work but i'm gonna try it all right uh, I'm, I'm getting a little bit too long in the explanations but uh, also i want to try a release mini charge um it, maybe it's the wrong term for this but uh, again this idea that i've been incepted by the discord that what's why do you want to release the button right and I had to this idea that, or I heard that games like Ikaruga, some certain games have like this idea that when you release, when you stop firing, your your shot will charge a little bit. Not it's not a huge charge. It's not like something that oh now I'm I'm have I'm so much more powerful. But it just like the next shot that you fire afterwards will be slightly stronger. And I think that that in combinations with Christian's pseudo cave might work well. But I need to try it. Another thing is and. <laughs> This is, this is gonna sound weird, but release suck in. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> I can explain. <laughs> so, in, uh, again, in a lot of shmups, uh, when you stop firing, you will suck in power ups. So, I want to implement that. I want to maybe try out what happens when you have a bunch of power-ups and then if you let go, all the power-ups go towards the ship. I think this is nice. And that also implies when we need to implement that earlier as power-ups. I'm going to try just simple medals for now and then we can always change them to something else. All right, another thing I want to try is, uh, that's something that Ectane already did and I already told you that I'm, I, I'm fond of that system, is that the danger system. Um, I don't know if that's that's the right term for this, but again, this idea that there's not really lives in your game, but instead, uh, when you, you have one life, and when you get hit, uh, you are in this danger mode, and in this danger mode, um, uh, eventually, like a power up get, will get spawned, or there's some kind of method in which you can get back to non danger mode, to normal mode, so you can you can lose a life, but you can quickly gain the life back. Uh, and maybe in the danger mode, you uh, there's something different. Maybe you're firing stronger, your shot gets stronger, or maybe it's just the same. I don't know. It's, but basically, just, there's just like two modes: danger mode and normal mode. Technically, Super Mario is is that. You know, Super Mario, the original Super Mario. I mean, it has lives, but also it has like this: when you have a mushroom, you're big, but when you get hit, you get small, and then when you get hit one again then you die, you know? So, <laughs> like, I wanted to basically implement that kind of mechanic. And then, again, something spicy. Christian's, uh, um, how do you call it? Glance. So I had this idea. I had this idea. And again, maybe that doesn't work, but I want to try it out. So this idea that instead of having lives, or maybe in addition to having lives, I'm not sure how that will um, uh, tie into the rest, but this idea that sometimes when you get hit, the shot glances off your armor, so to speak. Like it, you, it bounces off sometimes. It's it's random, so you cannot really control this. And because there's always a danger that you're gonna just die, you cannot bank on this. You cannot rely on just like surviving, getting shot. You will definitely try to get avoid getting hit, but there's always a chance that you get away. And I think that's I I, it's, I think it's worth trying this. I think th there's there's some. There's some good logic behind this, I think, and I, I'm gonna, I'm eager to try it out. Right, so these are broadly speaking my, my ideas. Now there is a lot of stuff that I, I just don't know. I don't know how scoring will work. I have no ideas on scoring because I don't have strong opinions on the scoring. And I'm hope, I'm hoping that throughout this development stuff that we're gonna have, find some hookups 
where, in which we can like find out ah and that's how you get the points for example i can imagine we we said like itano circus right like the itano circus this might be a scoring mechanic right the idea is like to create a, as much of a big explosion as possible or maybe like the really suck in thing it might this might be the mechanic right you want to create lots of medals and then uh, you suck them all in and that's how you create like all the all the points. I don't know. You're going to find out maybe some hookups and maybe even Actane will help us a little bit finding out this stuff. All right. So these are my broad ideas. Now, the first step is going to be, I'm going to do some cleanup. Um, I think our, um, um, the level that we have set up right now has some like useless enemies and some enemies that fire too strong patterns. I'm going to do some cleanup there. I want to maybe have like a menu where I can select different modes at the beginning so I can try out different, different configurations. Uh, and I want to also draw some uh, score on the screen. So I just have to score on the screen and I'm going to see how that works. All right, so let's get started with this and I'm going to see you when I'm done with that. So we got this far now. So this is basically the stage has been set. I cleaned up the level. Um, I um, just did some tests. I'm drawing a score in the corner. And I just used this opportunity to research, do a little bit of research there because um, I'm using a new feature that I haven't used before, uh, which is a storing a bigger number in um, in the Pico variable, more than 32,000, whatever. Um, I did a video on this when this feature came out, uh, when I did a feature review, but I never actually implemented it in the game. So I had to look it up how this works. Um, I'm gonna talk about this later if we're gonna, you're probably gonna end up using this. Uh, I will walk you through this later on. Uh, but yeah, you can see that there's a way higher number up there. And just like as a test, I'm uh, getting a point whenever I'm I'm defeating a, uh, an enemy. I don't like the text on there, the, the font. I'm gonna try to use a custom font later on, but for now I'm just like setting up. Uh, another thing I did is I have like this menu. This <laughs> took a little bit too long to program this. <laughs> okay, um, we have a menu so we can jump to different positions in the level. So the beginning, the cliff is here. Um, and then uh, down here are the chunkers, the, the big enemies, right? So whenever we want to try out a certain feature on different parts of the level, we can easily jump to different parts of the level. Yeah, and that is the stage set for our experiments. So the next step is going to be try to implement, we're going to, we're going to look at, at our goals. Let us try to implement the, the classic cave. Let's try the classic cave. Let's go. So this is done. Um, so uh, this is the cave version, this, the basic cave. This is very familiar to the territory if you ever played a cave game. So basically you tap the button for the kind of like the spread shot. And then if you press the button, uh, it focuses down on a, like a more focused, more powerful shot in the center. Very familiar idea. Uh, works amazingly well. I like it. This immediately feels like at, it feels at home. <laughs> Um, some there's some visual details that I don't like and I want to work on these a little bit uh, one is that um, when you see when the spread shot is on you see that the shots don't quite like the muzzle flashes are a little bit too small for the shots that appear and that's maybe something that uh, we need to tweak the positioning of the shots uh, but also I want to, I don't, there's something else that I don't, don't like about the shots. They feel a bit samey. I'm a bit struggling with that feeling because <laughs> this is one of those problems that we're doing this prototype so late on that that occurs. We spent so much time looking at this single shot that we had until now, like the, the two, two shots. So now after all this time, when we tweak this, it feels odd and strange. And it's like, I don't know about this. I don't know. I'd like to return to the old, to the familiar stuff, right? 
So now that I tweak this shot, I don't know, it's like, it feels like oh, this new stuff is cool, but also, I don't know, I kind of like the simplicity and the familiarity of the old one. Um, so I don't know if this is something that is real or if this is just like me getting used to the shot. That's why I want to maybe get in some feedback from other people. Um, but also I'm kind of like a stickler to these things in a way that I don't know anybody being that the stickler to this kind of stuff, to this kind of audiovisual stuff. Uh, anyways, um, I do think this feels a bit more like, because we're repeating one shot all the time, right? It, we just we're repeating one shot all the time. It just looks a bit samey, like a texture. Uh, or like like a wallpaper basically like just like put all, all the same shot everywhere um this might be something that we need to desync maybe the animations a little bit there's a lot of things that you can tweak to break it up a little bit but also uh, i want to try out having smaller shots on the outside smaller shots on the outside so uh, there's more of a central thrust of the shot and the, the uh, lateral shots are a little bit smaller and also the reason why i want to add smaller shots uh, is because the next step would be adding options and i think it makes sense that the options are firing slightly different shots okay so let me try to um, work on this next but uh, before we go uh, also i wanted to show you <laughs> i don't know why it took me so long <laughs> but now you cannot leave the screen anymore <laughs> It was possible to leave the screen all this time. <laughs> but for now, um, let me work on the little shots and then maybe also going to create some sprites for um, the options. Let's go. So I've been working on the bullets and I think they came out really nice. Let me, let me show you what I, what, I, what, what I got. I got this. So this is the spread shot now. And you can see the outer bullets are different design. You can see that they're just straight, right? They're just straight bullets. Um, not necessarily a lot smaller, just slightly smaller, but also just like, like more of a laser bullet, right? Um, and, and they're not animated. I probably should animate them a little bit. But so far, like this, this looks really nice. I think this is this has like the more of a laser feeling, and also the focus fire has more of a laser feeling. Also, it has the variety that I was looking for. It was looking a bit samey, but now I, I see more of a structure here. So this is this is an improvement uh, all all around. I designed a different bullet just to try out, like a beefy bullet here, right? Um, but if I use this, I'm not really happy with this. Let me put this as the center bullets. Uh, nope. Uh, let me put them as the center bullets real quick. Here. Yeah, you see, it, it doesn't quite work for me. I don't know, it, it just looks a bit weird. The, the, I think the other, way look, the other one looks better. And I think the reason why I don't like the new bullets is that they have this bright, bright stuff in the front. And the other bullets had like these these dark pixels in the front, and I think dark pixels make like they introduce this feeling of motion blur that uh, that you're not getting with the with the other bullets. So um, so yeah, but the other bullets do look they, they, there is a vibe there. There is a vibe there if you use the, the thicker bullets for for the focus fire as the center pillar of the focus fire. Now we get more of a ride and uh, blue beam kind of effect, which I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but I do like this. This shot. This feels. This feels good. Maybe the outer bullet should be a bit shorter. I, I have to experiment a little bit with a detail, little details, but but we're we're in the ballpark that I was looking for. Maybe not so much with the with the focus fire, but definitely with the spread fire. Uh, time to try out the options. Oh 
All right, so we got the options going. This is how far we got. Let me quiet down the music a little bit. Right, so we have um, we have some options. We have two options following us, and uh, going on focus fire will make the options go like to the center um, to the, of the ship. And um, also the shots are being fired from the options. Um, also, each option has a muzzle flash, which is not quite aligned with the options perfectly right now. I don't like that. Um, this is because, um, I mean, we have different sized options as well. So actually, for the for this option design, I, I, I uh, tweaked it so it matches this design. But you can see still the muzzle flash is not quite aligned. And the question is like, how do you implement the options? There's two up, <laughs> there's two options, there's two possibilities. One is that we can make them into particles, and we already have like the option to map a particle to a sprite, so the particles attached to a sprite. That, that's how we do with the muzzle flashes or like the impact effects. Uh, so that's how I started initially. Um, but that r made me also realize that it was actually hard to implement the f this this feature that they are lagging behind the ship. That was kind of like tricky to pull off. Um, so I decided to. I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit so they're actual actual objects. Uh, so they're using um, they've been drawn using the object routine. Right, and I I have to calculate their position anyway in a custom way, so there is no reason not to do this. Um, right, so there's two things I want to do. I want to uh, clean up a little bit the, the option stuff. Um, also, by the way, the muzzle flashes don't work, <laughs> don't quite work, no matter what I do, because um, right now this option style design has an uneven and width, and my initial ship, the muzzle flash, was designed for an even width ship. Uh, even width of um, pixels, so no matter how I move around the muzzle flash, it won't never match the the options. And generally, I want the muzzle flash of the options to be a bit smaller than the muzzle flash of the main ship. Little tweaks, but I I'm not. I decided not to focus too much on these things because it's broadly speaking, I just want to have a gut feeling like if this feels good. So far, this feels good. Um, something I don't like. And that's something I also want to work on. Like when the options come together in the center, like with this, it actually looks nice. But um, I have this blue outline on the ship, and I kind of don't like how the blue outline, how the options look with the blue outline. The blue blue outline obscures the options a little bit, and that's not ideal. So I have to think about this. I, I can actually want to try out the circling. And uh, so in. in in spread mode, the options will be on the sides, just sitting there. But if you do focus fire, they start circling the ship to have like this um, this effect from the Ronpachi. Uh, I think that's a really nice effect, and I want to try to replicate this. Um, otherwise, I I want to just like um, implement all three options to see, like to have a rough implementation of all three options to see which one I like the most. So far, I have to say, this feels good. I mean, this is. The thing is, it feels good because it's familiar, but also the, the shot looks nice. It, this looks this looks like a nice shot. Okay, let's go. So I want to do more work on the options, make them spin around, and I want to see like a very easy way to switch between the three variations to kind of decide which options I actually go for. Let's go! So I did some experiments with the three options. I think I have a favorite, and that is the Gatling. Um, let me show you what I got. Okay, so this is the Gatling situation, and this is like the circling, and this is, mm, that, I think this came out really well. Um, with a side, with a, with a, with a moving around, uh, around the ship, uh, the positioning, I had to position them really far forward. I, I kind of don't like that a little bit. I, I, I'm worried that we're gonna have a lot of situations where shots spawn right inside an enemy when you get close to enemies. It doesn't matter. I think it looks really nice, three-dimensional, and uh, it solved the problems that I had previously, where I felt like the sprite was overlapping the the options, but now the options feel like really nicely integrated into the sprite. This this feels right to me. This feels good. And also another sort of problem that that we uh, that was solved is, I think the shot looks really the focus shot looks really meaty now. Like it looks like mm, 
has like really oomph. And I don't even mind that the uh, muzzle flashes are not that great. I don't even mind anymore. I think that's okay. Um, this is good. This, this, just broadly speaking, this works. Um, one little problem I have is like the Gatlings are themselves, like the actual sprites, are not animated. I don't think it's, it's. I don't. I don't think I need to animate them uh, because they're already moving around a lot. Like they're very, they're a very active element of the of the of the player ship. So I don't. I don't mind that too much. They're a little bit big. So I was also exploring the other options. So here's another option. I had, um, I call them the spinny things, right? The spinny, uh, spinny ships, they're like this. So they're like these little droney, like I don't, I did the, the, the muzzle flash is not at the right position, but it doesn't matter. Oh, actually, let's let me, let me put the muzzle flash at the right position and now it looks better. Um, I like how they're animated. Uh, this when they're circling around the player's ship the animation and the way they spin is not quite synced up i think uh, we could put in some effort to make them actually sync up so they're actually they're rotating as they're rotating around the ship i think that would re look really cool um they're a little bit bland i have to say they're just like little tiny little ships and uh, th there's a problem with these kind of like um plain looking options that I have, which is when they're looking too much like a tiny little plane, you think that maybe there are a, like a storytelling, like conceptual thing. You think there may be like a um, wingman. I think in a lot of like, there's like 9042, like those kinds of shmups, they also have options and they're like tiny little planes. And that always bugged me because it's like, your pl why is your plane so big? And why are the other planes so small? Like, it, are these like, you know, planes for ants. <laughs> like, <laughs> why are they so small? <laughs> that makes no sense to me. Uh, and so, like in this case, like the na the narrative behind it, that there are kind of like some kind of drones, some kind of uh, drones that fly information with you. Um, and the fact that they're spinning makes them seem more robotic. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Especially the, when they when they are next to you, like the, because they they slot in. And and I like it, it, they feel so rigid. I don't know. I I don't. I don't. I don't love them. I don't know. I, I like that they're small. That's something I like about them. And they kind of like because they're so bland. They don't. They don't draw that that much attention. They're just like some things that buzz around. So that's maybe maybe a bonus there. I'm not sure. Okay. Let me look at the next thing. So the other thing that was just recently I added is this. These quads. So that's animation library 21. Yeah. Um, no, I don't like this. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think they, they're cool. I think um, something that I like about them is that it's clear what they are. They are tiny little quadcopters around you. That's cool. Uh, there's no questions about whether there's a, a pilot sitting inside. There's no questions like how they, they technically work. This is this is <laughs> understandable technology. It's a little bit weird that they are as fast as a jet. Like that's not how drones work these days, but that's okay. <laughs> um, they seem incredibly powerful that they are able to shoot this kind of shot. Like they don't like it seems like they shouldn't be able to shoot these this kinds of like crazy shots. Um, I don't like the flickering of the propellers that much. I mean, they sell the idea that there's a propeller happening, don't get me wrong. But I think the flickering is a little bit intense. And also don't, don't have the um, blue outline. So there's a bit, they feel don't, don't, not attached to the player. It seems like some, some a foreign object because the player's ship has like this blue outline, but drones don't have the blue outline. And the problem is I cannot add the blue outline because they're of the flickering propellers. I cannot add an outlet to the propellers because they make the propellers seem really like massive. Um, so I have to leave the propellers as they are, like the, these white pixels. And that, and I cannot put an outline around the body of the, of the ship because that kind of like makes the propellers very like, it, it um, conflicts with the propellers. It's just like visually difficult to solve this thing. It's not like the worst thing in the world. It's okay. But I think compared to the alternatives, I think I think Gatling gun uh, pods win me over. The problem with the Gatling guns is again, there's a, they're big, a little bit big and they kind of like make no sense. <laughs> there's the flying Gatling guy, okay. <laughs> 
but I'm thinking of this. Uh, I mean, this is already a cartoony such scenario anyway. So maybe that's actually pretty good because it's like I, I'm thinking of them as a Rayman kind of situation where it's like, if this was realistic, those would be mounted between, uh, underneath the plane. But because this is a bit of an abstract cartoony kind of situation, it's fine if they're hovering next to the plane. You, you can imagine some arms like maybe they're, they're just symbolic. <laughs> I don't know, it's a kind of like a Rayman kind of situation again. And I, I but I feel like they're like compared to the size of the shots, they're feel appropriate. Uh, they're very meaty. Uh, they feel fun. Like these are fun things. They're a little bit dominant. Kind of like draw attention away from the actual plane. Uh, but when they're circling around the plane, if they feel good. I think I'm gonna keep those. I think I, th I think these are nice, but I'm gonna keep the uh, the other ones or designs around as well because maybe this will evolve. I do have to say, like I really like the shot, the way the shot looks right now. Also, I tweaked a little bit the shot damage output because I, f I was worried that I was enjoying the new shot uh, a lot because it was just incredibly effective. I dial it down to um, 0 0.7 of of the previous damage output. You can tell that this is. This works because I just like find myself just restarting the game over and over again just to, because it's fun to blow things up. This is a good um, classic cave. So solutions, options with spread is also already done. So the thing I would try to do next is something a little bit more experimental. This so far we painted firmly within the lines, um, but something I want to try next is this pseudo cave idea that I want to try out, which is I, I, I kind of don't like how you have to hit the button to have the spread shot. Uh, that's, I think, a little bit of a barrier to a lot of people who don't play a lot of shmups. Like, if you play a lot of shmups, this feels natural. But if you don't play a lot of shmups, it's like, ugh. Um, so I'm gonna try this uh, Christian's Cave shmup idea next. Let's go! I lied last time around. I did some experiments. I, I've, I've slept over this, and I've been thinking about, you know, what to do there. And before I go to the Christian special thing that I tried to I want to experiment with, which I also want to do, uh, I actually tweaked a little bit the behavior of the options because I wasn't quite happy about it. See, previously the way the options behaved was they were kind of lagging behind the ship, and usually that's a very good animation. Uh, idea that kind of, kind of like have like this overshoot thing not not overshoot doesn't matter there's like this animation principle where um, you know where you have some element of a character kind of like lag behind the actual character like a cloak behind the character kind of like not quite moving with the character but kind of like lagging behind right and that was the idea with the options and the intent intended effect was to make it feel like like as if it's kind of some kind of a little bit of loose formation a little bit flowy loose formation so the options are not quite perfectly attached to the ship so you can feel that they are kind of like this maybe magnetically attached to it somehow or or they flying in formation there are their own ships that are flying trying to follow the the main ship that is not i felt that this is not really what happens when you do that what actually happens is that uh, the ship is moving a lot and the options are kind of like very um, unresponsive. They're kind of like very reluctant to move with the ship. So it feels like the ship is bouncing against the, the options and the options kind of like very sluggish. Um, and that's not, I, I want to have feel bouncy and fun and, 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 and you know, interesting. So uh, I didn't quite like how the, the options like in the not focused mode were kind of like just lagging behind. So I chose a different solution. And now the options are, I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm gonna make it there. So now the options are rotating with the ship. You see how they're rotating with the ship? That feels, it's not, it's not bouncy maybe, it's not necessarily like, they're kind of like seen more firmly attached to the ship now, but I feel like this makes them feel a lot more um, lively and fun. Uh, now the perspective of the rotation is not quite aligned with the sprite. I might need to overdo the sprite a little bit. 
now that I have the options in here, but I'm, I'm fine with that. And I did something else. Uh, I changed the way uh, the animation between the focus shot and the option and the normal, um, the not focused shot, uh, how this animation, uh, how the transition works. So I tweaked a little bit with the animation and then let me show you, let me get through this level <laughs> real quick. <laughs> ah, it's actually really fun to play now. I especially like the focus shot feels really good. Like the, uh, the, the option circling now, it feels really good. But you see how, how the options, when you release, the options bounce back. Uh, and I kind of like wanted to have like this, so they, it seems like, you know, a, a gun being cocked or something. Um, so there's overshoot a little bit into, into their positions. And also I had to tweak a little bit because there, um, because there's no uh, pixel, uh, specific location, pixel location that they're rotating, rotating around because our ship is an even number of pixels. Actually the right option was one pixel off, so I had to tweak that as well. All of these are things I'm writing down and I will, when we do the final implementation, I will, we will fi figure out something out how to make that work very efficiently. Right now it's very inefficient. But yeah, this, this actually feels really good. This actually feels really good. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna try my experiment. Let's see how that works out. So I implemented my version of, of or a second variant of how to move the ship. Uh, let me ex demonstrate. So now I have like the selection here. This is the cave style, the style that we just had just now. And this is now the, I call it the aspirate style. It's also cave. <laughs> I didn't just don't, don't, didn't want to call this a Christian style, okay? Um, so an aspirate is also a cave game. But in that game, I feel like, um, uh, keeping the button pressed is viable, I think. Like it feels like the way I played it, it felt like viable to just keep the button pressed. Like it, you weren't too slow when you kept the button pressed. Um, and you had other strategic options when you were not shooting. Um, so let me show you real quick. So um, now keeping the button pressed gives you like this focus fire, but it has a little bit of a spread. Uh, you are way faster when you are. Um, when you're in focus mode, so to be when you're firing. But when you uh, let go of shooting, you are way faster. So uh, if you want mobility, you don't shoot. And if, you want, if you're shooting, you're still not out of the game, so to speak. You just can still like, it's viable to just keep the button pressed. But for those situations where you really need to avoid something real quick, you can let the, the button go. Uh, this is a bit of a simpler scheme, I think, and it doesn't require the mud button mashing. Uh, it just occasionally you want to maybe let go of the button. Um, but now, of course, this has a lot less spread. So for this mode, I would probably um, need some additional abilities, some, some kind of bomb or some kind of, like I was talking about some kind of other stuff that we'll get to in a second here. Uh, so if this is complemented with additional abilities, I think this might be a, a, a simpler approach. Uh, and also I want to uh, give more uh, reasons to let the button go, uh, maybe to collect some, uh, some uh, uh, power-ups or something like this would be also good. Uh, I, I'm in love with this with this option, and I kind of I, I oh, this pays off so much off. It feels so nice to let go because like the the options <laughs> slot into place. <laughs> Maybe we should, we should have a sound effect for that, like clack clack. Maybe even like a like a real reload animation <laughs> happening. That would be really fun. I mean, of course, now that we have this, we can think about our other uh, gameplay things. Maybe the cannons are overheating and they will be actually less effective with time. So you need to let go every now and then to maybe reload, but maybe that's not, not a good idea. I don't know, reloading mechanics is, doesn't feel so great. Uh, but yeah. Oh, oh, also something I also added, which is a little bit subtle, but uh, you kind of see, you see how when I'm moving left and right, the shots are kind of like wavering a lot, like they're moving left and right, because that's because there's a bit of a headlight 
uh, effect happening where um, the shots will have a slight bias towards the direction I'm moving in. And that allows me to have a little bit of a um, uh, aiming happening. So I can aim a little bit in the direction I'm moving, so I, I don't, I'm, it, it's even less bad that I'm not moving fast, so to speak. But of course, uh, if I'm like doing micro-dodging, that, that kind of screws up my ability to do a lot of damage to something uh, in front of me. Yeah, okay, good. This, is, this seems good. We have like two options to experiment with, and I feel like um, these are good enough. So this means that this is the pseudo-cave. This is the aspirate esp mode. Uh, but now I want to now get into the other options. So I want to uh, have a classic bump next. I want to press a button and the screen explodes. <laughs> Let's try that next. Alright, so the first screen explosion thing is in. Uh, it's it's very rudimentary, so now I have like this ability. I have some ideas for missile, so I already had some have have some, have some options for the ability. But for now, I want to try out different things for the bomb. I have like two broad approaches I want to try out, um, just for the visual effect for now. Like gameplay-wise, it works. I press the button and the screen flashes and the <laughs> the enemies explode and also the bullets are get um, killed as well. Um, something that is missing right now is, I, I, well, generally, broadly speaking, I don't think that looks really nice. Like, it's just flash of the screen. It's a little bit simplistic. Uh, it doesn't also feel like the explosion is coming from your ship. So something I want to work on is, like, the visual. Like, this is okay. This is this was fairly cheap to do. Uh, and I probably want to, like, fade to white anyway. Um, so that was a good start. But I think in, if you want to really experiment with bombs, we need to have some something more <laughs> impressive. <laughs> okay, uh, so the next step would be maybe to try to fill the screen with explosions. <laughs> I'm not sure if this will work out, let's see. Um, and uh, and then I have uh, another idea for like a, like a visual effect that maybe looks more like a bomb. Let's try to do those things. Woo! Mighty. So this is uh, I ready for explosions because I made explosions. <laughs> yes, uh, I have a button to make the screen go white and also fill everything with fire. So yeah, this uses uh, hooks into the explosion system that I already have. Uh, I tweaked this a, a bunch. Um, one uh, important thing I did is I um, I made it so I can scale the grape explosions that we were working on there. They're, so far they were all the same size, but now I can make them bigger. Um, and then basically I'm just filling the screen with grapes. That's what I, all I'm doing. Um, and then there's some time delay happening so that the explosion in the center are happening first and then the explosion, um, the outer explosion are happening. Um, and also I tweaked it so that there is no smoke from this explosion because I want this uh, stuff to di um, dissipate fairly quickly. Uh, the problem is that you notice is that <laughs> we're getting into the reds. Yeah, that's a little bit too much for Pico 8. That's a little bit too much explosions for Pico 8 at once. Um, yeah. I don't know how to solve this problem. Uh, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay to have some slowdown when when you trigger the explosion. Um, but maybe there's some other ways. Maybe we can make this go. Because the problem is also, it doesn't feel that forceful. It just fills the screen with yellow. You know, it's it's, it's it fills the screen with fire. That's that's it's good and it looks fine. But it's like it, there's still some like it's not the entire screen is full. And I don't feel like there is a bit of a. I don't feel like a force coming out of the ship. It's just like 
blankets the, the screen with fire. Um, which might be fine, but maybe we might want to try something else as well. So that's something I, uh, the next, that, that's the next thing I'm gonna try out. And then I have a different idea for a, kind of like a graphical, more of a graphical effect that maybe looks more like a, like it's you know, like it's actually a force that is being projected from from our ship. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is a great explosion. <laughs> It's a really big explosion, okay, so I, 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 don't, I, I don't mind that much. Uh, but later, let me try the other thing. So I've been working a little bit on the bombs. I've tweaked a little bit the last bomb I did. I didn't quite like that. So I, I want to show this off first. And I also have a new bomb which I kind of like more. But we're going to see. Um, so this is the first bomb that I upgraded. So this is the bomb that we saw previously that just fills the screen with fire. I made it go from the bottom to the above, which makes it seem more like a force going in a direction, right? Previously it was just blankening the screen, but now it feels like it's moving somewhere. Um, I think this is a little better. Um, but uh, still, you can see we're redlining there a little bit. Um, this is, by the way, this is a look that I kind of like was inspired by from um, Crimson Clover. Crimson Clover also has this kind of bump. You don't use it that often. And I don't, I kind of like it that, that much in Crimson Clover. I think there's better effects in Crimson Clover. But yeah, this would be kind of one of bomb. It definitely is a very fiery explosion kind of thing. But I think we can do a little bit better and we can make it a work a little bit smoother. So this is another ability that I tried out. More of an abstract explosion, but I think it feels more forceful. Um, basically, I'm drawing a circle that goes out. And then once it fills the screen, I'm drawing an inverse circle, which is using the new functions from the newest PQ8 update that draws inverse circles that basically does the, the thing that I made a video about, where it's kind of like draws a circle, but it fills everything outside of the circle, but not inside of the circle. And so I, I fill everything with white, and then I reverse it and then Remo begin to removing the circle from the from inside out, so it looks like a white shockwave uh, emanating from the ship. Um, and then there's some little details, like there's a bit of a flash. Um, it, it flickers a little bit in the like the the light flickers a little bit, and then there's some shockwaves uh, trailing behind it. Kind of like tweak the effect until it looked nice. Also, the speed of the circles is important. Like the initial circle outwards is very fast but then the fading out is a little bit slower. I experimented a little bit with different, um, like maybe adding particle effects to that, but I think it just made it look like a cloud. Um, and I want to make it like re retain this idea that it's like this kind of shockwave. So it's not really like a bomb, or more of a, like a, some kind of like force explosion or something like this. But I think it looks very anime, <laughs> which is kind of like the look I, 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 was, I was looking for. It is maybe a bit too flashy, but I can re reduce the flashing by not making it flicker. The flicker and really added a lot of flashing to it. Um, also, the thing I'm a little bit worried about is that for a second you don't see anything because it covers the screen. But again, I think that doesn't really matter that much because when you do the bomb, um, you, um, you are invulnerable anyway and all the bullets are being destroyed anyway, so that doesn't matter. I, I, I do like the second bomb better and it is a little bit easier on the, uh, lighter on the tokens, so. I think if I'm gonna do a bump, I'm gonna probably keep this. This is, I think, a good effect. Oh, it also it lacks, obviously it lacks a, a sound effect. And we could also do maybe a, sh a screen shake. So anyway, like this looks good. I think we're, like this is, is a very satisfying bump eff effect for now. So the thing I'm working, or I'm thinking about next is uh, kind of like gameplay. Uh, uh, consequences to the bombs, like <laughs> what will the bomb actually do? I mean, now it clears the screen and so forth, but maybe scoring consequences and so forth. And also, I want to try the Itano Circus thing that I was teasing. I, I kind of want to try out missiles that are shooting out from the ship somehow instead of the bomb. So let me try that first. Let's go.
Yes. So um, I've been working a little bit on the rockets and let me show you what I got. Let me show you what I got. Here are the rockets. That is the idea. <laughs> That's that's how much how much I got. So the rockets are basically coming out in a in a spread shot. I can uh, define how many rockets are coming out, so I can have less rockets coming out. Um, currently, the thing I'm working on is first of all, I think the um, like if you look at the performance, it's not that's not that great. Uh, and I think, I, but I know what what it is, right? Like you know, I'm drawing the trails, and the trails are take a lot of effort. Um, and then, of course, the rockets are coming out, but they're not actually colliding with anything. <laughs> and uh, the, they're supposed to be guided rockets, like in Itano Circus, they, they're following the, their targets. So um, I have to make them follow, like pick targets and follow their targets. And uh, also the, the initial spread I don't like. Um, I think in the Itano Circus you get like a thump and, and the, the rockets are coming out very fast in, initially. And then they pivot and, and then work. Like there's like a mutual stage process happening. They want to fan out in the middle, uh, fan out at the beginning a little bit, and then go towards the target. And right now it's just like they're starting and then accelerating and then that's it. Um, and also like the wiggling, I, the wiggling is really good. That I think that really fits the Itano Circus idea very well. But I also that's not... Um, at the beginning there's little wiggling and then later on there's more wiggling. Or like the, the wiggling should change. They should straight be flying very straight and very fast at some point. <laughs> you can tell I'm really, <laughs> I'm really into it. But yeah, no, this was fun. This was fun to do, and I I want to now um, continue work on this. I have some to-do lists that I want to do here. So uh, oh yeah, I also want to fade out the trails as well. Uh, I want to make sure that the trails are all deleted. Uh, I want to make the trails not as CPU intensive, just updating and uh, less frequently. Uh, and then the lock on, and then maybe spreading them out a little bit. Oh yeah, and also when you launch them at the beginning, maybe there is some kind of shock wave or maybe some kind of um, uh, more like a cloud effect. Um, so it's 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 uh, there's a kind of like a muzzle flash basically, but for rockets. <laughs> oh, and then finally, if that's gonna be very in CPU intensive, I have a <laughs> emergency plan. <laughs> where I will freeze the game, the rockets will shoot out and go towards, and then I like there's going to be like a hit stop, basically, when you do the, the rockets, which I think is also might be fun. Good, let's go. So it's been a while since I've been working on this, but now I'm back on in on track. Um, <clears throat> so I tweaked a little bit the missiles, but I'm and there's there's still things I need to tweak about them. But I'm already seeing that um, I probably this is not going to be it. I love the Itano Circus rockets, and maybe we're going to use them. Maybe I'm going to try some setup where we don't actually have bombs, but we. Uh, we use them in a different way. The problem I have with the missiles right now is that they are they are beautiful, but they are not disruptive enough. Um, like and, and just like it's, it seems like a secondary fire, but it doesn't seem like um, like um, you know like this kind of bomb. This kind of a bomb should feel a little bit disruptive. It should feel like you know things stop because we now use the bombs. It seems to something to be like an emergency button, right? And the the um, missiles don't quite feel like an emergency button. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I still want to tweak a little bit something. And maybe I want to add a hit stop. So uh, when you fire the missiles, everything stops and the missiles fl f uh, fly out. Maybe something like this. Also, there's some things I want to maybe fix about the trails of the missiles. But I'm already thinking about uh, trying something completely different. Um, so we had like the shockwave going out of the ship, but I want to maybe uh, use a, like a wipe where it's like a laser shooting out and then wiping around the screen. Uh, also using a hit stop as well. Uh, I want to try that as a like a fourth option, I guess, at this point. 
and then we're gonna see what we have and we're gonna assemble everything together to a gameplay um, idea. There is so, still some other two other things that I'm missing. I want to do uh, power ups. I don't have any kind of power ups. And I want to maybe do like a small charge. So that's also missing. Something I added here, you can see that, is I added a custom font because I was experimenting. I didn't record that, but I was uh, uh, experimenting with different fonts. I have a book. I will show that in a second. Uh, I took a font from that just to see how it looks. I kind of like this. This looks a bit cartoony, uh, but in a good way, in a way that I think fits, fits the mood of the game that I'm, I'm going for. So yeah, I want to spend some time maybe on the missiles, but then I want to try the real, the, the, the wipe thing. Let's try that. So I've been experimenting a little bit and I, I also tried a new approach here that I think is kind of nice. Let's try that. So you let your stuff and now here's the bomb. Kind of like a laser that's spinning around the, the ship. Kind of like that. I think that's, that's also a cool effect. The only problem with that is that this requires a triangle drawing function, and I've been looking for some triangle drawing functions. <laughs> uh, it's 335 tokens, which is not too bad, but it's just 335 tokens that I could also not have. So, like, it would be nice to have this amount of tokens for free. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, uh, we're gonna do like a head-by-head -head comparison, but I think for now I want to move on to some gameplay stuff. Um, uh, so more gameplay stuff. So I want to add um, a system that allows us to have um, power-ups. I want to be able to pick up the power-ups. And then once we have that, we can start uh, bringing all these effects together to create different, um, you know, different gameplay setups. Let's try that. <sighs> So um, I did some experiments with pickups and I think I found something that I really liked. So uh, <laughs> going back to the original idea to episode one, do you remember? Do you remember the first episode of this tutorial? Uh, we had this idea that we are rescuing cows from the aliens. And one of the things that I did in my original mock-up was a little pickup of, an, of a cow. And I've been experimenting with different designs and I think I came up with one that, that I think really works. Let, 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 me, let me show you. Uh, there was one, I just picked it up, you don't, you don't see it now. But look, look at these beautiful cows. They're little bubbles and you can pick up the bubbles. Bloop. <laughs> And the bubbles are, are pulsating and the, the cows are flying around a little bit. I think this works good. I like this. Uh, obviously, way too many uh, pickups spawning right now. I think uh, if, if I wanted to do this, I would probably do less bubbles. Just occasionally maybe one. I'm uh, like at, at least half as, ma uh, as, as, as many. Something I like when I get hit, the pulsating still continues. That's... Ah, <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Uh, that's because the animation of the bubble is is something that is done in the draw function, not in the update function. So the animation of the bubble continues. But I like that. I like when so, some animations continue uh, even in a freeze frame. So power ups. I mean, that's not power ups. That's a pickup. That's. But I don't want like power ups. I don't want um, pickup weapons. I I'm, I decided that I don't want to do that. I just want to have good basic abilities. And the pickups are going to be all about scoring or maybe stuff that powers up our abilities. Maybe picking up the, the 
uh, cows will um, make a meter go up and then that um, enables you to do the bombing or the, the rockets. There is a thing that I want to do. That <laughs> uh, I want to try this. I want to have a function that allows us to suck in the power or the, the pickups that are already on the screen because I already feel like I need them. Um, and these things, the release mini charge, change system and Christian's gland systems, I, I'm going to push this a little bit too later. I don't think I want to experiment with them right now because at this point I have a lot of variables I want to experiment, experiment with. So I want to take all these systems that I have and put them together into something that is cohesive. And I think I have at least two ideas how they, these things can come together. Maybe I can come up with a third one and uh, then we're going to try how they play out. Let's go. One eternity later. All right, so a lot of time has passed and I haven't recorded my work on this because, man, this has been such a long episode. Like, I, I think I spent, like, the first time I started recording this episode, the first segment was two months ago at this point. Uh, and between the previous segment I just recorded, I had major knee surgery being done. <laughs> Not major, but, but knee surgery, right? I was knocked out. Um, and also the stuff I've been working on is not really mission critical. I've been just doing some, uh, um, I would call this logistics, right? There's some little details that I, I added, but broadly speaking, we're done. We have three prototypes. That's what's, That was my goal. I get like the first round of prototypes out. I have three very different prototypes. I will show you the prototypes in a second. Uh, let me show you the changes. So first of all, this is stuff that you see right now. I can like... Uh, simplified the main menu. You could ch change different uh, abilities and so forth, and that was good in the, in, in the meantime. But if I want other people to actually play this stuff, I want to actually create like a handcrafted experience that just kind of where everything is tuned to work together, right? So every prototype is just like a menu. I have different spawning locations, but I just like left them in uh, because it was easier to do so. Um, uh, there is a high score system that, is, that I'm tracking just like to make people play maybe a little repeatedly to try to achieve higher scores because high score is something I care about. I already talked about I have some custom font. I tweaked the custom font a little bit. Um, by the way, I haven't shown. The font is taken from this book. So this book is called Arcade Game Topography uh, and the author is Toshi Omagari. So this is the book with a lot of like um, fonts from different arcade games. And the one I chose is, yeah, here, this one. Uh, this is from a game called Passing Shot and it was released in 1989, uh, 1988. I have no idea what this game is. Um, I never played it. I thought the font looked nice. I uh, made it uh, more condensed a little bit. So I did some tweaking around and I still want to tweak some more. The nine, I don't, like, don't quite like how the nine looks like, but it's, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, we're fine. Anyway, um, there's an, another major thing that I changed. Let me turn on volume as always. And that is how power-ups work. Uh, so you see, <laughs> they will zip it very quickly. So you see how we have power-ups now. And if I get closer, they get sucked into my ship. Um, that is because like I realized like some of my uh, prototypes, some of my approaches will actually need the sucking in capabilities. So I implemented them so everything on the screen gets sucked in. And when I did that, I realized that this is actually kind of nice to always have. So there's like a radius around your ship. And when the power-ups enter that radius, they get sucked in, so it's easier to collect them, which I have in some prototypes, I don't have in other prototypes. Um, and also you've seen when, when you suck in a when you suck in a uh, power uh, pickup, a cow, you see how it has a bit of a trail. This is just like a line that I draw, like a single line, not even like a curved line, just like a single line. But that line uh, is makes it look uh, a lot more juicy. Uh, now, the sucking in uh, code is not ideal. Sometimes the uh, power-ups will like orbit your ship. Um, maybe we're going to fix that later on. So it's good for good enough for now. With that out of the way, let us... <laughs> talk about the different prototypes. You can see this is prototype A2. Uh, this is already the second version of the prototype. I fixed some, some bugs here. So this is basically your cave-like shmup. Uh, very, very standard safe cave-like shmup. So you have like, if you tap the button, you see you have the spread. And if you keep the button pressed, you have the focus fire. And then you uh, collect the uh, 
the cows and the cows will charge the meter at the bottom. And now the meter is full and I can now trigger the bomb, which just explodes everything on the screen. And that's it. There is some nuance, like uh, I, you get a little bit more score when you shoot the enemies from close range. And you can see that when I do that, there's like a little star among the explosion. It's not very well, well visible, I need to fix this. But there's like a little star, for example now, you see that there was a star there. That indicates that I got like full score for that enemy. And if I shoot the enemy from further uh, away, that score diminishes. Uh, it's between like uh, from very far away, it's 100% and very close, it's 200%, so to speak. So there's a bit of a leeway between how much you can get from a single enemy. So really scoring well in this game is all about, or in this, this prototype, is all about getting close up in person to the enemies. Uh, also, uh, killing enemies with a bomb always gives you maximum score, which just like incentivize using the bomb. And that's basically it. That's this, the first prototype. Um, again, very standard and not a lot of painting outside of limes. Not very exciting, but it kind of works very well. I kind of found myself like playing it over and over again because it feels very well. It feels very familiar. Maybe. Uh, let me show you the second prototype. So this is prototype B, B2 at this point, again, second version. Now this is a bit of a different beast. First of all, um, I tried not to have the focus fire. So you only have the normal shot, right? And then going left and right gives you a little bit of a, um, curves the shot a little bit. Uh, and then when there is a, you can see there's a multiplier underneath the score. That multiplier gets boosted when you pick up a cow. And then you can see that countdown timer, and that countdown timer comes, goes down, and when it reaches zero, uh, you lose half of the multiplier. So you kind of want to keep, um, you want to keep collecting the cows to, to bump up the multiplier. Uh, there are some little tweaks, for example, um, that was also present in the previous prototype, when you, um, the drop rate of the cows is higher when you shoot the enemy from close up. So if you're close to the enemy and you shoot the enemy, then it 100% drops a cow. If you're further ahead, there's a chance that, that you won't drop a cow. Um, this is a bit of a controversial thing maybe to do because there's RNG involved a little bit, but on the other hand, there's so many enemies and so many cows, it evens out. There is no... There's no opportunity nor possibility for some kind of crazy lucky run, right? Um, so yeah, you, this is all about you know chaining those cow uh, pickups, basically. And this mode also has a, a meter that charges at the bottom. That meter is just um, charged by uh, shooting down enemies. And then it has like this different uh, bomb effect when you shoot down enemies and then um, the bomb effect will also suck in all of the cows on the screen and it will also suck in later all of the cows of the enemies that you killed um, when you use the bomb. Uh, also, uh, letting go of the shot will also suck in the cows. So you can potentially have a lot of cows on the screen and let go and then suck them in at the same time. Um, also, the range and at which we are collecting cows, because I already talked about how in the previous prototype the cows were got sucked in by the ship. This time I turn it off, so you actually, if you want to pick up a cow manually, you have to get really close to it. And the easier solution is always just to let go of the shooting button. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, also, like mo movement when you're not shooting is very, very fast. Movement when you're shooting is a little bit slower, not like focus fire slow, but a little bit slower and tweak the numbers a little bit. Yeah, this is all about, this is all about chaining. You have to find out the right moments where you can pick up the cows. Um, you should pick up the cows. And yeah, there's some, some lulls in here that are very difficult to bridge. Um, but yeah, I haven't designed the levels with that in mind. So it's kind of like nice that it works anyway. So that's project number two. And this is project number three. Now this one is a bit of a far out kind of, because I <laughs> I ran out of ideas. Like these, the first two ones were pretty easy. I just like, I take the things I had and put them together. Uh, this one I had to kind of like think a little bit um, or like come up with some ideas. And this is a bit far out. Um, so uh, this has again, very different movement style, very different shooting style. So you shoot with a shoot button and that is, gives you the spread fire. And then there's, if you press both buttons at the same time, you get the focus fire. So you kind of get the, the cave effect, um, but you don't have to do the tapping. 
it's, it's all just about keeping button press, which might be a more, a more user friendly. Now you can already see that I use the Etano missiles for this one. So at the bottom left of the, um, of the screen, you see like these bars going up. These are my missiles being charged. And then I release the missiles by letting go of the shooting button. Um, and so these missiles are basically kind of like very core to how the scoring works in this one. Okay, so the scoring is Bellatro inspired. So you see there's a pink multiplier and like this um, a peach colored base. So by shooting down enemies, I, I increase the base and by picking up the cows, I increase the multiplier. And then uh, once my missiles are fully charged up, none of these go up anymore. So I have to release the missiles, and when I release mi missiles, I get that, that score. I don't have the score yet. It's kind of like uh, held in, in reserve, so to speak, uh, as it goes up. And then I score out by releasing the missiles. And you can see that the score is blinking red when, when the missiles are fully charged. So this is about racking up you know, multiplier and base. You need to rack up both, and then releasing the missiles to, to score out. Uh, if the missiles kill anything, when you release them, then that also gets added to the multiplier and to the base as well. Like every kill gets an additional multiplier then. Uh, this is a bit more complicated. It probably requires more of a tutorial. Um, and But this is more of a conscious scoring here right now. Because like with the other, like for example, with a uh, with cow sh chaining, you wouldn't be paying attention to the chain at some point anymore. You would be just like trying to get the cows. But here you're trying to set up those scoring situations. Maybe you might release the missiles a bit earlier because there is a good opportunity to shoot down a lot of enemies with those missiles, right? Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, so this is the third prototype. And as you can see, with all three prototypes have slightly different scoring mechanisms and all three prototypes have slightly different movement and shooting mechanisms. So I want to see how these will work out for people, uh, what people find works best for them. So these are the three prototypes. Now, the next step is to get in some feedback, but we're not going to do this on this episode. We're going to do this on the next episode. So I sent this out to all of my subscribers on Coffee or my supporters on Coffee. If you are a subscriber supporting Coffee, you already seen this. You already seen the post. I posted them already. If you are just following the channel, then, well, if you could become a subscriber and then you will be able to play those things. Uh, but also I've sent them to some people, some selected people from the Schmuck community, for example, Actane. I sent it to Actane because I, I know that Actane will do a live stream of those and will give me uh, some feedback. At the time when this video came, comes out, the live stream has already happened, but there might be a VOD uh, on, the, on the Twitch channel. I will post the link down in a doobly-doo if there is one. Otherwise, don't worry. We're gonna like figure out what the right gameplay is, and we're gonna, of course, do the back to go back to the normal tutorial and implement them slowly. Don't worry. For now, I'm gonna move on to the end of each episode where, as always, I will say a big thank you and huge shout out to the people who are supporting the show on coffee.com. And now, today, is it's, it's that time again where we're gonna um, say a big thank you and huge shout out to all of the new people who joined Coffee in the meantime. So as of May the 5th, a big warm welcome to Ninjixel, Daniel Subramaniam, Dom Kiffingish, Nailcall, Genio, and TH4. And also shout out to single donations from Zafer, GWI, El Gopher, Rafi, and Scrap Savage. Thank you so much for your support, guys. This show wouldn't be possible without you having my back. Now, also at this point, I want to give a big shout out to uh, one of the creators from our from our uh, from our Discord that has been very prolific in the recent um, weeks, and I've, I've somehow I've missed to do a shout out there. So uh, check out Onion Belly Six Nine. They made an incredible shmup based on a basic shmup tutorial, which is called Pony Nine Thousand. So there's like a like a unicorn happening, and it's shooting, you know, like in space and cyberspace. There's rainbows happening. This this looks incredible. There's just so much flavor to everything that is happening. Ah, this is really, really good stuff. On your belly is having a lot of fun uh, with creating games, and I really, really appreciate. It. Check it out. Uh, uh, the game is called Pony Nine Thousand. I think even there is like a even like a Picotron version of it at this point. It is really cool. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, this episode is finally finished. A huge weight is off my shoulders, but a new challenge looms on the horizon. We're gonna gather all this feedback. We're gonna do modifications to finalize and figure out what the gameplay for of our game is going to be. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.